Valorant can be described as nothing less than a success story in esports. With record player and viewers year over year, Valorant is popping off more than ever, but for many, the game is starting to feel a bit stale. While there's many things that Valorant does amazing, there are still big changes that could happen that would fix the game and make it one of the best games ever. So let's break down what those are. And the first category is new features. And these are features that if added would make the game feel a lot more complete. And that's one of the biggest problems problems is oftentimes Valorant feels like a ranked game simulator where there's not a lot of depth past just the ranked system as a whole and that's where 90% of the players spend their time. Now first off is definitely going to be a replay system and this is one of the most important things a game can have the more competitive it is and with Valorant being a very competitive shooter it's kind of crazy that we don't even have a replay system up to this point. Whether you're analyzing your own gameplay to get better or using it to make higher quality better content a replay system is a no brainer for 2024 and definitely a fantastic new feature that they could add to the game next up is just flat out better training we still have really poor ways to practice our mechanical skill in game we have one little dirtly course and we have the training area which is basically just us shooting at bots or stationary little targets and that's really just nonsense i mean they could go so much further with ways to practice your movement and aim in game that would just be revolutionary I mean, imagine having an obstacle course that you could go through, practicing against real characters that are moving in diverse ways. Maybe there's a timed course. Maybe there's aim lab style challenges, but with actual characters where you're actually practicing the gunplay and the movement fundamentals, and then you get put on a leaderboard. There could be a lot of really difficult challenges, maybe a jet knives challenge, and just a whole bunch of different training things they could add, and then give you customizable options so that you could make your own little training special. Like imagine every time you log into Valorant, you have your own own little training warm-up routine that has all your settings saved so then it's like 15 minutes and it runs you through whatever training that you have inside Valorant itself this would be a really great feature and definitely one that they should consider adding to Valorant now, the last one in this category is more casual modes or more modes that give the game more depth right because there is really not a lot of options and I think a 1v1 mode and even a ranked 1v1 mode would be really really sick and then a 3v3 mode would be really cool as well and there's a lot of different types of modes they could add but really the idea is to just give players more options more things to do so you don't just have to always queue another game of comp over and over and over again and you have some other fun things to try or play with friends would be really really sick now there are also a lot of changes that need to be done to the rank system but if you're really looking to climb in ranked then we've simplified the process with our brand new wall hacks course it's basically going to tell you every single common position players play on every single map and how they look to reposition throughout the round so that you can essentially track players through walls. It sounds complicated, but we made it all simple to remember, and with a couple of easy tricks that our coaches have put together, through their years of experience, you could become a game sense god. All you need is the right tools, and you'll find them over at skillcap.com. Don't believe us? We got a rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't climb, you don't play. So check it out right now down below. Next up, we do got to talk about some rank changes, and there's a couple of core rank changes that would probably be better for the longevity of the game, and get rid of some of those more feel bad moments in the competitive system now first up let's talk about high rank hidden mmr is something that causes a ton of problems in high rank where players will have a certain behind the scenes rank that is affecting what type of games they're getting in whether they're harder or easier and it's creating some problems like some players really struggling to climb because their mmr is so high even though their rank is lower because they were high mmr previously in a previous act or there's some situations where people use their high mmr to quickly establish themselves in a certain rank and radiant and then just lock that rank in no longer trying to climb anymore because there's no incentive to do so they already got the rank they wanted to when it was a lot easier to get it in the early stages of that act regardless it's a pretty simple solution and it comes down to two steps number one implement a rank decay past a certain rank now i don't know what that rank should be should it be immortal three immortal two immortal one what should the rank decay bring you down to too low and all the sudden players that are really really cracked would be too low in rank and these players would actually just ruin a ton of games but you make it too high and then you're not really getting rid of this problem but a rank decay makes sense because it encourages players in the higher ranks to actually grind the game and not just sit or park at a rank and also skill checks players to climb to rating in the first place and not just allow them to easily do it based on their past rank and makes it so it's more competitive to fight for those radiant spots now the other thing that you should do alongside this is that hidden mmr should not exist past a certain 
rank. So there is a smurf detection or hidden MMR system in the Valorant rank system. And this is actually common in a lot of rank systems where if you're overperforming consistently at a very high level, you gain more rank and you climb faster, which 100% makes sense. You want to force people that are smurfing out of certain elos very, very quickly. So they don't just slowly but surely ruin game after game after game, right? But once you get to the highest ranks of play, especially when we're talking about like Immortal 2, Immortal 3, and Radiant, it doesn't really make sense that there's a hidden MMR at all, and instead, your win rate should take priority. At the end of the day, your impact should matter most, and it should be reflected in your win rate. And if you can't maintain an above 50% win rate in the rank that you're in, doesn't matter what role you're playing, then you should not be climbing. Just simple as that. Now, I want to make this clear. This should not be implemented for every single rank, only the very, very highest ranks, because for other ranks, it does make sense to push people to where they belong faster. And you might initially be like, what the hell? This is a terrible change if you're in high rank listening to this. But keep in mind, you will have less people in ranks they don't belong that are on your team. And that's a big deal because you will just have more consistent games overall. So yes, you're going to have to grind more. Yes, you're going to have to grind for the rank you want, but you're in the highest elo. You're grinding this game really hard anyways. It's going to be more balanced games. It's going to be better games. You're going to enjoy it. Now, one of the things that feels really bad is when you lose a game because of a cheater and then you find out later that there was a cheater in your game. It's pretty annoying, but it would be really, really cool if they detect a cheater in a previous game. They say, cheater detected, here's your rank back that you lost for that game. That would be really cool, although it could create maybe some inconsistency in the system where the people that won gained and then you gained on the losing team and then everyone gained and that's a little bit annoying so they could give you a little bit of sr back maybe to balance it out but maybe an even better system would be just something to make you not feel as bad for losing the game to a cheater i really like the idea of a pop-up that says cheater detected our anti-cheat failed you so here's 100 credits on us or something along those lines do i think Rai would ever do that no do i think it would really aid to the experience of valor making people feel better about losing to a cheater 100 percent yes and it's not like giving out a little bit of credits here and there is going to make it so people are going to be able to buy skins just with that but it is a little bit that helps and it makes people feel more comfortable last up in rank changes i think better competitive rewards would be great if you make a new rank high a new act high or something along those lines i do think that some form of competitive rewards would be amazing especially credits i know that that's unlikely when we're talking about riot but if they did give us some sort of credits to buy skins or honestly what if there was one weapon skin that was just free for people that played ranked that episode or that act and there was different colors that were unlocked depending on the rank that you got that's a really small thing to do and it would be amazing like it would go really really far and i think it would be a great addition the next up we got to talk about the next category which is infinite replayability and these are the things the two things that i think if you add you would make valorant stand the ultimate test of time like it's already on that path but adding this basically makes your game immortal and increases replayability a hundredfold and the first one is a map editor having a map editor would be phenomenal to design maps come up with map ideas that's one thing i mean some of the best maps of all time were community made like does do and many other maps and in addition to that just having a map editor to just make cool things cool designs try things that would be really really sick and then combine a map editor with something similar to a workshop mode and this is directly from overwatch but other games have done this as well where there's a mode where there is a soft coding system inside the mode so you could design your own game modes with your own rule sets and if you combine that with the map editor all of a sudden you're going to be seeing crazy mini games crazy custom game modes really really fun variations of valorant that people could just play for fun and then you combine those two things with the server browser and i understand a map editor take a while to build it's really really difficult to build a workshop mode that's a completely different beast that takes a ton of effort and time to build but keep in mind once these two things are in the game with the server browser the game doesn't ever get boring again it will never ever ever get boring again with a replay system and a workshop mode the sky's the limit for what people can create and they're gonna create some hella fun game modes and i do think that this would be one of the best things that they could work towards maybe not this year or next year or the year after that but just slowly but surely if this comes out at any 
point, it basically establishes Valorant's future in the casual community forever. And I just don't think that it's possible to get bored anymore if you added those things together. The next up, we do gotta talk about balance changes. And this is gonna be the more personal opinion piece. I did ask fellow content creator and coworker XDR and some other people what their opinions were about the balance in the game. And the first thing that came back was that the game is fairly balanced. Nothing is really sticking out like a sore thumb. Although there are some people that have personal preferences here and there, there isn't like one uniform opinion about things being too busted or too weak. I will say that something that a lot of people agree with is that Killjoy in particular has been a bit too powerful for too long and that more sensible diversity would be good. And there has been a step to do that as of recently with the cypher change, but honestly just more sentinel seeing play across the board, whether that is chamber or sage or deadlock, any of these characters would be really good to add more into the meta and just overall increase sentinel diversity because unlike the other roles like initiator for instance, right now it doesn't feel like most of the sentinels are even playable. Now another one that came back is that the judge was a bit too powerful and deserved a nerf. And I could see some players agreeing or disagreeing. Some players are going to be like, nah, it's just a skill issue if you're dying to judges. Other people are going to be like, yeah, a shotgun, a semi-auto shotgun shouldn't even really exist in attack shooter. And then there's like a lot of opinions in between. What do I think? I think that you could probably nerf the judge a tiny bit if you wanted to. I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world, but I also don't really think that losing to the judge is always the most competitive feeling. Sometimes it just feels a little bit gross, super, super unfun. So I could honestly take it or leave it, but I want to know your opinion down below. How do you feel about Killjoy in the Sentinel role? And how do you feel about the judge? And is there any other balance changes that you would make if you were in charge? Let us know down below. Now, in addition to buffing certain characters like Deadlock and maybe Chamber, I do think that Neon could use some more fundamental changes, primarily because Jet and Rays are the only two duelists that can take space aggressively on site. That's why they're pretty much the main ones that are used in competitive play. And you would think that Neon could do something like that, but she just can't. I mean, her wall is just super, super awkward. Oftentimes, she doesn't consistently stun where she wants to stun, and she really is hard to synergize with a team. She really only works on fracture with breach and i think that if they tweak some things about that character she could be another duelist in that camp of the duelists that are like needed to be played so yeah i would want some more fundamental changes even like to the extent of like a rework maybe i don't exactly know her fundamental movement her slide movement all that is perfectly fine but maybe her wall could be changed her stun could be changed a little bit i'm not entirely sure what that would look like but there's no reason that a character with her movement sets doesn't do what is needed of a duelist when you're trying to take space seems a little bit strange now the last one is fundamental additions and these are additions that would really really make the game feel more fresh more fun and i think a lot of people would be excited for these changes and the first one is one that is most likely actually coming sometime in 2024 and that's new weapons this has been teased for a long time and i think that this is a great way to spice up valor because valor is fairly balanced i mean it's a really solid machine where you get really competitive games that people like the core gameplay loop all that is great but sometimes after you've grinded again and again and again and queued up again and again and again you get a little bit bored it's not necessarily that the game is unbalanced or frustrating because it's unbalanced it's just that a little bit more excitement would make the game feel fresh and interesting and i think a new weapon would go a long way or a couple new weapons in different categories would go a long way another smg would be really really sick maybe another pistol would be really cool now i understand that playing with new weapons is like playing with fire because if you make it too strong it could completely warp the meta and if you make it too weak then no one cares but uh yeah i mean they can always balance it after the fact we know that they're pretty good at balancing weapons in the long term so yeah i mean new weapons would be fantastic and a cool way to make the game fresh again another thing that i think a lot of people would like is a way to turn in your own skins for maybe not credits but a random skin of a similar rarity maybe you have to turn in like two skins or three skins of like one type to get a random skin of that type from the entire pool that'd be kind of cool because maybe you're really tired of a certain skin or you've collected like three kind of trash like bulldog skins for instance you turn them in and it gives you a random really cool bulldog skin that'd be kind of a cool way 
uh, let us trade. I know that they're never going to ever let us trade between each other. That's not going to happen. They're not going to let us sell our skins back to them either. That's not going to happen. So this is like the best compromise I can think of. Next up is a fundamental addition. Of course, I'm biased here, but I think this would be so good. And every competitive game should do this. Greater codes, which they first introduced or it got popular in Fortnite, where when you buy anything in the game, any skin or whatever, you put in a code of a certain creator that you really like. Skill cap code or your favorite streamer or whatever and they get a percentage of whatever skins you buy maybe it's only like five percent but that could go a long way and that could create a lot of revenue for a creator i think most importantly for smaller creators when a smaller creator really wants to make content full-time or they really want to start creating bigger projects and really really cool videos it would make all the difference if there was creator codes and you could also see a lot more creative content a lot bigger content being made with creator codes it's just a really great way to supercharge your content scene and make it so people want to create and invest in really cool tournaments and big pieces of content combine that with a map editor or workshop mode and all of a sudden you're off to the races with some fantastic things in the content creator community that just brings some life into the game and the secondary scene which is really really cool now overall these are all the big changes that i would implement in 2024 for valorant but do you agree or disagree with any of the changes i brought up or was there any big thing that i missed that you think would be a great addition to valorant as a whole definitely let us know in the comments down below and check out skill kept if you really want to get cracked in that much time we'll see you there and i'll see you next time